Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, solar vlog number four, we're going to talk about uh, wiring up the EG4 inverter. If you follow me on this channel, you know by now that I have tasked, oh, I said it properly, that EG4 6000 XP inverter to run my mini splits. I have three mini splits that run at 220 volts. And I have one, which is in here, that runs at 120 volts. And I don't know if you've ever known anybody who's lived in South Texas, but the springs and summers here can be brutal as far as heat goes. And I've got a lot of equipment that needs to stay cool. And I got a spouse that likes to stay cool. So I thought, what better way to torture test this EG4 inverter then to uh, hook it up to my mini splits and let it run all four of them all summer long. Now, why that idea is good in thought, in practice, it's a different thing. And it meant I need to buy some more wire. I need to buy another uh, sub panel for my, uh, I need to buy breakers for that sub panel. I need to buy ground bar. I need to buy wire. And then I needed to devote some time to hooking all that up because that meant that I had to run another separate circuit back to my main panel, take those mini split circuits out of that panel, move them into a sub panel that is hooked up to the EG4. So that's what this video is all about today is how I did that, how I made it happen. So let's go over to uh, where I can show you the installation. You can get a better idea of what it takes to make all this happen. So there is the uh, EG4, if I can get a shot of it here. So here's the EG4 hanging on the wall in all of its glory. I now have all the connections. I was waiting on these little adapters to adapt this down from a larger to a smaller size so I could get these conduits put in here permanently so that all the wiring is finished and nice and neat and all that and meets code. So. Here's my power coming in from the grid. Here's my power going out to this load panel. You follow the gray pipe down and over, and then it's going in here. The power is going into those lugs, two hots, red, a black, and a neutral. Anyway, so it goes into here, and then I have a 20 amp breaker here that goes down to a, a 20 amp outlet. And I have a 15 amp breaker that goes to the mini split for the server room. And then this 40 amp dual uh, pole circuit breaker, which goes to number eight aluminum wire. This is a service entrance cable. So this is number eight. So two hots, a neutral, and a ground is down here, the braided wire that you see. And that goes into this eight, four, uh, cable, which then goes down over to the other side of the house, which then comes up through the bottom, a light gray cable, it comes up and then goes around back here behind this junction box and then comes up and lo and behold it terminates in this other panel. So you can see I have a plethora of panels. This is the main critical loads panel that is fed by the Victron and this all this does is it it is is it extends the output of the Victron uh, inverter over to here and then this distributes the power to the rest of the house these are my critical loads my refrigerators my lighting circuits my internet that kind of thing TVs bedroom lights <clears throat> and that feeds over then into my main panel and you can see I have a lot of uh, splices in here. have all my grounds tied together here. So same thing with this second critical loads panel. This is a critical loads panel. This is a 240 volt, whereas this one's only a 120 volt panel right now. This is a 220 or 240 volt. And this feeds all my mini splits. So I've got a mini split for my living room, a mini split for the den, and a mini split for the master bedroom. And these are all 240 volt or 220 volt mini splits, 20 amp circuits. So all I did was I brought up this eight aluminum cable, wired that up at the top, 
and I, you see I use deoxid on these connectors just to be safe. So all these, this panel is live and is fed from the EG4 uh, inverter and that ties in into all my mini splits which then come up in here and are you know tied back together through these little uh, uh, chingaderos, these little connectors back here these Wago connectors and only use genuine Wago connectors these are not the best way of doing things but they're better than wire uh, I like them better than wire nuts in a panel but just be aware that these can be opened very easily a lot of electricians will tape over these to keep them from opening I don't go to that extreme once they're in the panel they're not going to be moved very much and they're clear to see that they're Wago connectors so anybody coming into this panel after I would would, would know to exercise a little caution so so there we go I've got all my mini splits now on that EG4 separated out of my panel so I can power them individually all right so I've just gone around and done maintenance on all of the uh, mini splits they're all now connected up to the EG4 6000 and it's about 85 degrees outside and I've turned all the units inside down to 78 you know where I normally keep them and you can see with uh, three 220 volt mini splits and one 120 volt mini split, I'm pulling almost 3,000 watts. When they first started up, they were pulling about 3,000 watts. So this inverter can handle, you know, up to 6,000 total. Uh, so 3,000 on each leg. And this is split up between two legs. So, um, you know, it's pulling about. 15 amps total at 240 volts, um, give or take a few amps, and it is handling the load just fine. So I'm only producing about 900 watts of solar, and most of that is going into the battery. And the grid is pretty much powering the load right now uh, for the mini splits, and that's fine. Uh, it'll determine, I've set it up to determine when it should charge from the battery and when it should use grid assist, etc. So I'm just not making enough solar today. It's a little cl partly cloudy, not a clear blue sky, so I'm not making as much solar as I could. But this just goes to show you the potential. You can imagine how much, that's three kilowatts that my mini splits pull under full load. Now it's, grand. it's not 100 degrees outside and it's not in the middle of summer, but this will give me a good indication, even if it gets up to 3,500 watts for whatever reason. Um, I can handle the load. In fact, I dare say I've got enough capacity to install yet another mini split circuit if I needed to. And we're thinking about doing that in our room off of our uh, main bedroom, which is our, called the parents retreat. But we'll see. We may or may not do that. But I just wanted you to see a uh, real world example, the solar up and running. Um, you can see it is producing solar, uh, and you see the solar just dipped down quite a bit. Clouds moved over outside. Like I said, it's partly cloudy day, and there it comes right back up. So it's committing most of the solar into the battery, and then tonight it'll run off of, uh, you know, once the battery gets above a certain voltage or percentage, it'll start using solar to power the grid. Anyway, there it is, up and running. Man, I'm happy I spent the money on this. Uh, hopefully it'll pay for itself uh, fairly quickly. All right, so here we go. Everything is buttoned up. Everything is labeled. So the mini split feed is this 40 amp dual pole breaker here. And then the studio mini split is a 15 amp breaker. And the server room outlet down below here is the 20 amp plug and then all my connections have been secured and closed up with the exception of the bottom of the EG4 but all of the you know, connectors are in there now so now we just need to put the cover on so that fingers can't be put in there so tools have been cleaned up you know I still need to sweep the floor but tools have been cleaned up off top of batteries no more tools laying around here, no more tools in the server room, no more tools up here, just everything where it needs to be. There is one cover there that needs to go onto the bottom of the uh, solar uh, charge controller, 
but all the other panels are buttoned up all the wires have been secured I just need to do a little uh, tidying up of these main feeder cables take the slack out of them as you can see and attach them to the wall so here in the laundry room everything has been put back where it belongs so I've got my main panel here with the cover back on it I got my sub panel the critical loads panel all of those breakers are in there and all clearly labeled over here as to what circuits they go to I just need to put some cable cable staples in there to keep those wires over to the side then the second as you can see the you can see what happens to these labels right after the humidity gets them they start to, uh, the glue isn't that good on them, so I'm going to just put them back over here. I need to put a cover on that, on that junction box, and then all of my mini splits are then wired into dual pole 20 amp breakers, so 240 volt 20 amp breakers for each mini split. Each one is labeled up top, and this is the feeder from the EG4, so everything is now <clears throat> clearly labeled. Everything is covered back up nice and neat. You know, you can hide a lot of boo-boos with covers. That's what I like about covers. So, everything is wired up. Everything is going and wired properly through the floor and tied up all is well with the world. So there you go. Done, done, and done. Okay? I'm done. I'm done with the solar for a while. Other than buying new panels, I ain't jacking with the, with the solar this spring and summer. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know I will. But there we go. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please uh, click the like button if you like the video. Leave your comments down in the comment section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'm speaking in dog now. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donate if you're so inclined, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube, join function, uh, or become a YouTube premium member and just get screwed with the rest of us. Thanks for coming to see this old man, and please come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side. He's the man they call Lunky Joe in this techie world. But now he's got to wire up the sun and you will find... He's got the only channel where the lights all shine. While the servers hum away, all he wants is to display. And he's getting known for keeping data strong.